is your phone listening to you? Okay, tell me if this has ever happened to you. You're having a conversation with a friend, you're talking about some random thing, and then you open up your phone later that same day, and there it is, an advertisement for the exact same thing you were talking about. It can't be a coincidence, right? They have to be listening. How is it that Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, they all know exactly what you're thinking? This little device has to be listening to my conversations. What is happening behind the scenes that it knows exactly what I'm thinking before I'm even thinking it? Have you ever had the feeling that maybe your phone is listening to you. Our phone's listening to us. Is this thing listening to us? That phone is always listening to you. It could be. Before I answer that question, we've got to go back in time to the early days of the internet, specifically 1994. This is considered the very first successful advertisement on the internet. AT&T ran this ad on a website called hotwired.com. You probably better know them as Wired.com now. They're the folks who do the Wired autocomplete interviews with all the celebrities. Everything changed after this because companies realized they could get eyeballs by purchasing digital real estate on the internet. This basically spawned the entire advertising ecosystem. The reason you go to a website and it's just covered in ads. Fast forward a couple more years and two companies emerged, Google and Facebook. Both of them are trying to figure out how they can monetize their giant user bases. And the obvious solution is advertising. The next thing you know, and everyone's suddenly an ad network. Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, Amazon, even retailers like Walmart now. There's this whole digital ecosystem worth hundreds of billions of dollars. It's the reason why when you click on an article, it's just covered in ads and you can't even read anything. Okay, 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 back up. What does this have to do with my phone listening to me? So in 2011, Apple introduced Siri, and a couple years later, Amazon rolled out Alexa. And then suddenly people started noticing this weird phenomenon. They started seeing ads for the things they were talking about. It's almost like the app is listening to your conversation. I was just talking to people and I have gotten ads for things. And the immediate assumption was that these voice assistants must be listening, right? Here's the thing though, correlation doesn't always equal causation. Imagine I say something like this, people wearing sunglasses are always sunburned. I think sunglasses cause sunburn. I mean, that's completely illogical, right? The obvious explanation is probably something like, people who wear sunglasses spend more time outdoors. Hence, they're more likely to be sunburned. The sunglasses are not causing the sunburn though. So are Siri and Alexa listening to you? The shorter answer is yes and no at the same time. Let me explain. All these devices are powered by what's known as trigger words or wake words. Hey Google, hey Alexa, hey Siri. See that? Essentially what this means is they're on at all times, but they're not actually recording or processing what you're saying. It's only the moment you say the trigger word that the device actually starts recording you. The audio request is then sent to the cloud where it's converted into text. All of this is processed in a matter of seconds. And then that information that you requested is sent back to the device or the command is executed on your device. What most people don't realize is that these conversations are actually stored in the cloud and you can actually delete them. It's just hard to do because the big tech companies don't go out of their way to tell you this. Just like I don't like to go out of my way to tell you to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. The question is, if they're not actually listening to you at all times, why are the ads you're seeing so relevant and personal to you? Essentially what's happening under the hood is some really expensive and fancy technology called ad tech. It powers the whole advertising ecosystem. There's all all these different platforms, DMPs, CDPs, DSPs, SSPs, all this stuff in the background you never even see. So essentially the way these platforms work, you know, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Twitters, they've built these really sophisticated algorithms to understand what their users want. What you search for, what you watch, what you don't watch, what you like, what you dislike, what you comment on, who you're following. They take all these signals to create highly curated user profiles. And then they take all this information to feed you the thing you're most likely to engage with, to keep you on the platform for as long as possible so they can serve you as many ads as possible. Because the more ads they serve, the more money they make. Don't worry, I'm gonna get to the point of why the ads you're seeing are so personal and relevant to you right now. You see, they don't just use these algorithms to optimize your experience and serve content to you. They also use these same algorithms to serve ads to you. Essentially, the way this would work is if you're a company like Nike and you wanna advertise on one of these walled gardens, you'd copy and embed this snippet of code called a pixel on your website. These pixels would collect user data so the pages you visited, the products you viewed, the things you put in your cart, the click ID from the ad, your IP address, even the device type. And if you're an advertiser on Facebook, this was super useful because all of this happened in the background without you even having to think about it. Facebook just handled it on your behalf if you just copy and paste this code on your website. Still today, this power is like most of the digital advertising ecosystem 
ecosystem. It creates this flywheel effect. You go to Facebook and tell Facebook who you want to target. Facebook shows those people those ads. Those people click on the ads, they land on your site, and then anything they do on your site gets sent back to Facebook to improve the targeting even more. So now this means Google and Facebook can track what you're doing outside of Google and Facebook on other websites. And this process is the same for pretty much every big tech company. Google and Facebook are just the best at it. And now it's getting even crazier because companies are realizing they can send their own proprietary first party data to these ad platforms directly to make the targeting even better. Imagine you're Netflix and you want to target everyone who unsubscribed in the last month with an ad to resubscribe to the platform. You just take your customer data, hash it, send it to Facebook, and Facebook will look for matches in their platform to find those people who unsubscribed. Okay, but the main question, why is the targeting so relevant for me? Well, you see, the tracking across the internet is so good that it makes it feel like these companies are listening to you. Here's an example. Let's say you're having a conversation with your friend and they tell you about this really cool new app. You've never searched for the app. You've never even heard of the app before. Later that day, you open up Instagram and there it is, an ad for that app you and your friend talked about. What's most likely happening behind the scenes is Facebook is drawing a link between you and your friend. Your friend looked up that app, downloaded it on their phone. Facebook knows your friend's with this person they know you have similar interests so they think hmm this person might also be interested in this app and then they push an ad for that company to you the fact that your friend converted from the ad makes facebook think that you'll also convert here's another great example imagine you tell your friend man i really need some new running shoes the next thing you know you get an email from nike saying here's 20 percent off for your next pair of running shoes and ads all over the internet for nike trainers you haven't even searched for shoes yet how is this happening no, your phone's not spying on you. What's actually happening is this thing called data science. Nike knows when you purchased your last pair of shoes. They also know what types of shoes you purchased, how long those shoes will last. So what they can do is make an educated guess at when you're most likely going to need a new pair based on the average lifespan of those shoes. What feels like you're being spied on is actually Nike making a prediction on your behalf and serving you an ad at the right time. It's not that your phone is listening to you, it's just that everything you're doing is being tracked. You have a digital double that you don't even know about that's made up of tons and tons of data points. And companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year to marketers and data scientists figuring out how they can use this data to ultimately deliver better personalization to you because they know if they can reach you with the right message at the right time across the right channel, it's gonna make them more money. The good news is the things being advertised to you are only gonna get more relevant and it might even get so good that it feels like they're listening to your thoughts. Here's the thing though, marketing is a lot more than data. It takes original ideas. If you wanna see a great example of this, just watch our video on liquid death.